mind, and that, um, you know, John, your remarks, um, and I'm not going to reply to much of what you said because it was too rich and I'm too stupid. Um, but, um, you know, it's, it, when you read Paul in uh, chapter 15 of 1 Corinthians, the distinction he makes in the resurrection body from the body we, of death is the difference between the soma psychikon and the soma nevmatikon traditionally mistranslated as the natural body and the spiritual body. But it's actually that body which is ensouled, animate, animal, which possesses psyche, and he seems to envisage a state beyond psyche, the, the, the true resurrection state of pnevma. So having a soma pnevmatikon is one um, that is beyond soul, in a sense. And that's, if you're using psyche, soul to mean psyche in that special sense. Um, but in a more general sense, psyche is also, uh, I mean, a unitive principle. It, in, in Aristotle, you know, agent intellect could not directly indwell an animal body, right? I mean, it's, uh, we understand soul is that unique property of life in that it, in that it is not confined yeah. to the spiritual or the, or the corporeal, the physical, the material, or the immaterial. Um, one of the remarks I would add, uh, actually, because of time, I'll, maybe I'll stick just to this. One of the things, that, for instance, one of the ways in which the modernity that won, rather than the alternative modernities you advert to, in which I have to admit I prefer, though I'm not as daring as, as you are in throwing around the language of Hermeticism, although I agree with it, I wait till the final chapter, <laughs> whereas, whereas you're willing to do it in the prologue, and not therein not lies the difference. Um, I'm trying to become tactical. You say this is yeah, the thing. it's not very convincing. Actually. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but what, what's interesting, for instance, is that internal theater of representation, as opposed to the notion of of the ecstatic communion and form with the world out there, is that you can see already that there's a problem of regress in that because the very language of representation is a language of translation. That that presumes some sort of intellective property that already knows the difference between what is translated and what it's translated into. Because representation would have to be a semiotic system that corresponds to a world according to a, a system of correspondences that's, if not artificial, nonetheless conventional, and therefore known. So the language of representation already presumes a kind of immediacy that it doesn't account for. It doesn't add up to. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and, exactly. uh, I mean, that's just an example of the kind of... Yeah, uh, no, no, really um, I don't really have quite your problem with the word idealism as long as one detaches it from the history of absolute idealism and the history of the post-Cartesian dualism. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I fully admit that yeah. you could describe Aquinas' ideas as more like ideal realism or, or something. Or, or, it's uh, and it's I, more idealist than people can see. Right, and I even have a sympathy, yeah. a great sympathy for, say, Basil of Caesarea and Gregory of Nyssa's understanding of, of whether or not Ely understood as substrate. Now, of course, that's problematic. Now, Barclay, yeah, when Barclay's rejecting Lockean the yeah, substrate... I mean, you know, this, this, you know, this probably... You know, and I, I'm not actually totally sure about this issue myself, but I, I think you're attracted towards a Cappadocian vanishing of matter altogether. Uh, and, 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 oh. and I am sometimes. <laughs> well, know, let me put it this way. Not a vanishing yeah. of matter, but the recognition that, the, that matter is all the way down function of spirit yeah. is and very in, well in, articulated Aquinas, by Gregory. In Aquinas, and unlike Scotus, Scotus, who turns matter into a quasi-positivity, matter is completely negative. Right. It's a completely pure potential. There's a kind of apophaticism of matter, if you like. Yeah. 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 No. It's, when, it's when, uh, and that's how below can echo above. Right. Right. Mm. Um, and I, I mean, I take that to be true of Berkeley too. As I said, Berkeley. Yeah. Well, uh, in Cyrus, it looks as if that's true. Right. Yes. Bar yeah. Berkeley's wrestling with the Lockean understanding of substrate, and he tends unreflectively to attribute it to all previous understandings of Ili Proti or Materia Prima. Uh, but in fact, he's actually much nearer, well, you could call it Cappadocian. I, I, uh, 
Anyway, I, um, actually, though, I have like a thousand things I want to say to what you said, especially on the distinction between magia and goetia in Renaissance magic. But I'll save that for a different time uh, because I, I suspect that both your papers will have provoked questions from other people. So just thanks, thanks so much. Uh, too much for the morning, but a wonderful nonetheless. Thank you, David. If John and Paul